Hey, tonight is uh, Third Nephi, chapter eight. Now it came to pass that according to our record, and we know our record to be true, for behold, it was a just man who did keep the record, for he truly did many miracles in the name of Jesus. And there was not any man who could do a miracle in the name of Jesus, save he were cleansed every whit from his iniquity. And now it came to pass, if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the thirty and third year had passed away. And the people began to look with great earnestness for the sign which had been given by the prophet Samuel the Lamanite, yea, for the time that there should be darkness for the space of three days over the face of the land. And there began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, notwithstanding so many signs had been given. All right, now it wants to give you an idea of what the time uh, is. Right? And so it starts out by saying that according to our, our record, it says that we know our record is true because it was a just man who kept the record and, and did, did many miracles and so forth. So the same Nephi that we just read about in the previous chapter, I <coughs> right, said that he raised his brother from the dead and uh, cast out uh, evil spirits and and healed people, right? He performed many miracles in the name of Jesus, so he was also the keeper of the record. So, I, so he's the one uh, keeping track of, of the days, and uh, so that's why it says that if it's a just man who kept the record, and, and so it, therefore, and, and two, it says if there was no mistake made by this man in the reckoning of our time, the thirty and third year passed away. So in other words, they're relying on his keeping of the time to know that the thirty-third year had passed away by this point. We're dependent upon him. Because right, there was no universal way of keeping the time, right? So he was the one doing the doing the tick marks, I guess. You know, that's another day, another day, another day, and so uh, so he was the one who knew that the thirty third year had passed away. And, and now it's it's important because of what's going to happen next, right? That they want to be able to pinpoint the time when this particular event occurred. That's why he's prefacing all that by saying uh, we assume that he kept the records correctly and he kept proper count of the days, and so therefore, according to that, the 33rd year had just ended when the next thing happened. In verse 3, it says that they, that by this point, they, they were looking for the signs to come, so again, maybe just seeing how wicked everybody had gotten, that that was a, a sign in itself, that, uh, that everybody was turning away from uh, the teachings of Christ, so they, they knew that, it's, 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 probably it's got to be any day now, right? As bad as it's gotten now, it's got to be any day that the sign's going to happen, because it's gotten really bad. Here and so that's what, that's what they were saying. So they were looking for the sign given by the prophet Samuel the, the Lamanite. There should be darkness for the space of three days over the land, right? Which is uh, the, the very first thing we have up here, right? To, under the signs of the death, three days of, of total darkness. So that's what they're what they're looking for. So again, they're not going to miss it because it's going to be pretty obvious when the time comes. They'll have three days of, of total darkness, right? So now, so now in verse four, I mean, what you would expect to happen is what's happening. Says so it began to be great doubtings and disputations among the people, right? They're disagreeing. They're saying, well, you know, the sign should be any day. Oh, no, we've we got lots of time. The sign's not going to come. And, or the sign should come by now. Maybe, maybe it was wrong what we've been taught or, you know, all different opinions on really what's going to happen because they're just talking and waiting and just waiting for the sign to, to come now. And it came to pass in the 30th and 4th year, in the first month, on the fourth day of the month, there arose a great storm such an one has never had been known in all the land. And there was also a great and terrible tempest, and there was terrible thunder, insomuch that it did shake the whole earth, as if it was about to divide asunder. And there were exceeding sharp lightnings, such as never had been known in all the land. We just finished saying that uh, we're relying on, the, on Nephi to have counted the days properly. So that's why now it's pinning it down to a specific day. As you can see in verse 5, it says it came to pass in the 34th year, in the first month, on the fourth day of the month, all right, there arose this great storm, which was just kicking off what's going to happen, right? And so some of the things that we see here, right, is, you know, thunder and lightning, or the earth with shake and tremble, all right? So the, this was the beginning of that that was happening on this particular day, the, the fourth day of the first month of the 34th year. Now, having said that, I mean, you know, the way we measure years today if you were, if it was the same calendar, that would be January 4th, but it, it, this was not the same calendar, right? What was the calendar based on? How, how did they determine it was the end of the, the 33rd year? The end of the 30, 33 years since what happened? Since the birth of Christ, okay? So, so, we're, so the, the fact that it's uh, the, uh, the, the fourth day of the first month, uh, so uh, how, how old was Jesus at this point? The 33 and four days, right? So, 
Therefore, the, and the, the day of, of his crucifixion, the date on the calendar would have been four days after the date of, of his birth. Okay, so whatever date he was born, four days later, and then 33 years later, was when he was crucified. Right? So I point this out because this is where we base our, our belief or understanding that, you know, although we, you know, we celebrate Christmas when everybody else does on December 25th, right, but yet it, it can't have been at that time of the year, right? Because uh, the, the time of Jesus' death, what else was going on in, in Jerusalem when he, was, when he was crucified? The time of Jesus' crucifixion was the time of the Passover, right? Now, the Passover has always been in, in the springtime, right? Always in the March, April time frame, all the way back to that, that time. So that, that date is more set, whereas the, the, the Christmas story was just told and it really could have been any time. There were no dates really given that exist. Traditionally, it's been said it was December 25th, right? Which should usually, or really that's tied even more to other traditions that put it, the, the celebration of that time. So, again, we celebrate the same time as everybody else, but really, Jesus would have been born in, in the springtime, in the March, April time frame, because it was around the same time of the year that he was crucified. That's, that's the time that, that it's occurring, and so now, as you can see, uh, what was starting to happen now, in verse 6, it says, there was a great and terrible tempest, and terrible thunder, right, it shook the whole earth, and the exceeding sharp lightning, such as they've never seen before, so now it's, it's starting, so... So this was, this was the first step, and they thought, oh, here it comes, right? We were just arguing over when it's going to come, and now here it, here it comes. And the city of Zarahemla did take fire, and the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea, and the inhabitants thereof were drowned. And the earth was carried up upon the city of Moroni, ha, that in the place of the city there became a great mountain, and there was a great and terrible destruction in the land southward. Okay, so you're seeing a... Uh, report, if you will, almost like a damage report from some of the different cities, and of course, you know, this was something that they, you know, discovered after, you know, after it was all done, they, you know, after they went around and saw all the damage that was done, and then they recorded what, what had occurred. So you see the city of, of Zarahemla is on fire, now it's like the capital, okay, so yeah, Zarahemla is like the capital city, it's where most of the people lived, so if this was like a major fire there, that's, that's big news, right, and it says the city of Moroni did sink into the depths of the sea, and so needless to say, the people who lived there were drowned, right? So the whole city is up un underwater, right? And uh, that says the earth was carried up upon the city of, of Moroni, ha, so that got the opposite uh, treatment, right? Whereas the one went below the water, this one, the, the, the earth closed over it, right? It was kind of like a big earthquake, right? So now they, they were buried in the, in the rubble, I'm sure. It says that the, what say, the places it became a great mountain, right? And a great and terrible destruction in all the, the land southward which encompasses many of these cities. So this is what's occurring so far. There's going to be more, all right? But this is the, the, the damage they saw in the land at the time of the crucifixion of Christ. But behold, there was a more great and terrible destruction in the land northward. For behold, the whole face of the land was changed because of the tempest and the whirlwinds and the thunderings and the lightnings and the exceeding great quaking of the whole earth. And the highways were broken up and the level roads were spoiled and many smooth places became rough. And many great and notable cities were sunk, and many were burned, and many were shaken till the buildings thereof had fallen to the earth, and the inhabitants thereof were slain, and the places were left desolate. All right, so as uh, bad as it was in the land southward, it says in the land northward it was even worse. Right? And as you can see, it says that the whole, the whole face of the land was changed. And you know, you, you consider what that means. Like, the, you know, maybe it's hard to tell in a town like this, because, you know, we have just, uh, you know, buildings and houses and stores and so forth, all right? But, uh, you know, so say if you had certain landmarks, all right, and then, you know, you were used to seeing those things, and then you, you came in after this, and, and they were gone, right? Things that you saw forever, they're, they're, they're gone, or they're covered, or they're, they're now it's sunk into the earth, or, or a new mountain has popped up, right? Since so the whole face of the earth has, has changed, so that they're, they're not even recognizing it when they, they look around. It doesn't look the same even the, the, the way it looked from before in a familiar way, now it's no longer looking that way because of the, the earthquakes and the storms and the great the upheaval that we're talking about. All right, so it, as you can see it goes through because of the tempest and whirlwinds and thunder and lightnings and great quaking of the earth. It says, and, and the highways were, were, were broken up and level roads were spoiled. All right, smooth places become rough. And you know, you can imagine, if we had an earthquake here, see, so this whole road would, would break up and so whereas now cars are driving down the road like it's a highway, you know, driving at 50, 60 miles an hour and suddenly the road breaks, you know, they, they would get thrown into, into ditches and uh, have lots of crashes and 
we be able to use the road anymore because now it's no longer level. So you know, the, just uh, an earthquake like that really changes uh, things. Now, of course, as the, the, the highways that they're talking about here, I think we talked about the highways one other time, right? This, this, this was not for, for high-speed automobiles, right? It was foretold that this would happen, so this would be the sign that they would know that it occurred. And I, I don't think they missed this one, right? I mean, some of them might have, might have missed the, uh, the day, the night, and then the day with uh, no darkness, but they, they didn't miss this one, right? As, 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 they were all affected, many were, many were killed, and the whole face of the earth is, is changed. Well, since in many great and notable cities were, were sunk and burned and, and shaken, buildings falling to the earth and so forth. So uh, lots of damage and uh, lots of people killed and lots of property damaged. And there were some cities which remained, but the damage thereof was exceeding great, and there were many in them who were slain. And there were some who were carried away in the whirlwind, and whither they went no man knoweth, save they know that they were carried away. And thus the face of the whole earth became deformed because of the tempests and the thunderings and the lightnings and the quaking of the earth. And behold, the rocks were rent in twain. They were broken up upon the face of the whole earth insomuch that they were found in broken fragments and in seams and in cracks upon all the face of the land. All right, so we heard about uh, some cities that were totally uh, either leveled or sunk under the earth or, or the earth or sunk under the water or the earth is on top of them, right? But it says now some cities... Some cities were, were not, you know, totally destroyed, right? It says, it says, but the damage was exceedingly great, and obviously many, many were, were killed, right? So that the cities that didn't get destroyed still had significant damage and a lot of, a lot of uh, fatalities, right? As you can, you can see, I mean, this, this is actually a fairly uh, graphic description of what happened, right? For you know, for the type of things that we read. I mean, you know, it didn't just say, okay, okay, there's a lot of damage and some people died, right? But uh, it's going uh, city by city and it says, you know, some, some were carried away in, in the whirlwind, right? A, a whirlwind would be like a, like a tornado or something, right? So some were carried away in the whirlwind where, where they went, no one knows, right? It says the face of the, of the earth became deformed because of the, as we already said, because of tempest, thunderings, quaking the earth, where rocks broken up into, and, and when I was talking rocks, I'm sure I was talking like, uh, the boulders or mountains or so forth, so you know things that were solid rock are suddenly broken apart. You know, so as I said, there really a lot of things on the earth depends on it being stable. So as soon as you get a, an unstable situation, things that you thought were solid are, are no longer solid, and they, they'll, they'll break right apart. So that's what's what's reporting here now. The, the one thing that I would point out, and I was thinking this as I was reading it, right, is it, it mentions in a couple of places about yeah, 17, 18. It says the, about the, the whole earth becoming broken up or deformed or so forth. See, I, I uh, would assume from the perspective of the writer that the, the land where they are is basically the whole earth, right? Because obviously the whole world was not broken up this way because if so, it would have been reported in other uh, records, all right? So I, I mean, where, where Jesus was being crucified, I mean, it did say there was a storm and it said that the, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, but it didn't say there was an earthquake and that the, the city tumbled. Right, so that I, I believe when it's referring to the whole earth, here it's referring to the whole earth where, where they were. Right, so it's uh, in the land of the Americas, the part that they're familiar with is what they're reporting on. So I just want to point that out that it's not really talking about the whole earth, it's talking about the whole world, but their whole world where, where they were located. And it came to pass that when the thunderings and the lightnings and the storm and the tempest and the quakings of the earth did cease, for behold, it did last for about the space of three hours. And it was said by some that the time was greater. Nevertheless, all these great and terrible things were done in about the space of three hours. And then, behold, there was darkness upon the face of the land. And it came to pass that there was thick darkness upon all the face of the land, insomuch that the inhabitants thereof who had not fallen could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light because of the darkness, neither candles, neither torches, neither could there be fire kindled with their fine and exceedingly dry wood, so that there could not be any light at all. And there was not any light seen, neither fire nor glimmer, neither the sun nor the moon nor the stars, for so great were the mists of darkness which were upon the face of the land. It says that uh, finally it ceased after the space of three hours, and it says it was said by some that the time was, was greater. Three hours, you know, when you just say it, it doesn't sound like much, right? But the average earthquake, I mean, just lasts like, like a minute or two, right? And it seems like that's a, a terrible thing, you know, to be 
to feel like you're holding on and everything, and, you know, just for a minute or so, all right, that's enough to do a lot of damage. To think that all this destruction is going on for three hours, right, and it seemed like an eternity, right? So I think that's why they're saying that some thought it was longer, and when it was all done, it probably right, three hours, it's all, it was three hours, it seemed like it was, uh, you know, three days instead of three hours, right? right? And, and now when it was done, it says at the end of verse 19, there was great, there was darkness upon the face of the land. As you can see, it says, it was a thick darkness, right? And uh, like 20 to 22, it's describing the darkness. And th this is a kind of a key point of this, all right? And a key description of what was happening, right? In 20, it says it was a thick darkness insomuch that the inhabitants uh, could feel the vapor of darkness. Right? Can you mention the darkness? Like you could feel the darkness. I mean, nobody else feels darkness. You see darkness where you don't see in the dark, all right? But it says you, they, they could feel the vapor of darkness. And there could be no light. Right? So that whether they had a candle or a torch or any source of fire, it didn't work. Right? So they, they couldn't well, say, well, just, we'll just make a fire or, or, we'll, or light a candle so we can see where we're going. It didn't work. So it, it was going to be it was going to be dark. Right? Or or maybe the candle worked, but it, but because of the vapor of darkness, you still it still didn't cast any light. Right? So it was almost like being in a in a, a dark cloud. Right? Where it was just they could feel it, and there was nothing they could do to penetrate this darkness, all right? That it was just gonna be dark, and that's all there was to it. So it said there, there could be no light because of the candles, the torches, fire, no, no matter what it was, all right? And 22 says they, there was not any light seen, fire, glimmer, sun, moon, stars, anything, all right? So they couldn't see the, the stars in the sky, they, they couldn't see the sun shining, they were not able to, to see any light at all, all right? So it was totally, totally dark. So this is what was left after everything was done. So. I want you to imagine the, the fright of the people who were not killed, right? The, first of all, they had this terrible storm and earthquake and so forth occur for three hours. The, the, the cities are all falling down around them where the ground's popping up, a lot of people are killed. And, and then when it's finally done, now, now we're all like blind, we can't see anything. We can't see anything, we're lighting candles and nothing's happening because it's, it's, we feel the dark in front of us. It's a very, very frightening time for the people. And it came to pass that it did last for the space of three days that there was no light seen. And there was great mourning and howling and weeping among all the people continually. Yea, great were the groanings of the people because of the darkness and the great destruction which had come upon them. And in one place they were heard to cry, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and then would our brethren have been spared, and they would not have been burned in that great city Zarahemla. And in another place... They were heard to cry and mourn, saying, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day, and had not killed and stoned the prophets and cast them out. Then would our mothers and our fair daughters and our children have been spared, and not have been burned up in that great city, Moronaha. And thus were the howlings of the people great and terrible. In three days total darkness, right? This is number one on the list here, right? So, three days total darkness, thundering lightning, earth shake and tremble, Mountains turned into valleys, valleys turned into mountains, highways broken up. So the, the, those were all the things that we had uh, uh, identified. With these. these were all all here as signs that the uh, crucifixion of Christ had occurred. Right? So these were very visible signs that they that they saw. And the, the idea of it being three days of, of darkness, see that brings you around to the basically the sun coming back up, and, and yet still total darkness. Right? So no, no matter what, it was day or night. In fact, they probably even lost track of what time it was or whether it was day or night. Therefore, they, they were not able to see what had happened, but they knew what had happened. They knew people were killed. They knew there was a lot of uh, destruction. So now, in, in 24, now it says they, they start to react to that. That's why it says that in one place they were heard to cry, Oh, that we had repented before this great and terrible day. You know, you remember the last couple chapters, we were reading it how the, the Nephi people had gotten off track. And suddenly, you know, they, they weren't believing in Christ, and they were uh, trying to kill the prophets and so forth. So it was all fine and well while they were doing that, but now this comes and says, oh, if we had only woken up in time, if we had only repented of, of our sins and uh, before this great and terrible day, then we wouldn't have had to suffer this. It says a lot of people have been killed. They're feeling actually responsible now. They're feeling guilty. Good, right? They should feel, feel guilty a little bit, but, uh, but yet... It was the sign of the crucifixion of Christ. I mean, that was going to happen regardless, all right? But yet now they were looking at it as kind of a punishment to say if we had been uh, more righteous, this, this wouldn't have happened to us, all right? But it said, so it says that the other brethren would have been spared, the city wouldn't have been burned up, right? And then in 25, it says kind of similar, so if we had repented and not killed the prophets, 
then all the, the people who we know wouldn't, wouldn't have been killed. Right? So they're looking at all the, the, the dead around them, or trying, or really sensing all the dead around them, and now they're reacting to that and saying, you know, that this was a punishment from God, and so if we had repented, then we could have avoided this, but now this is where we're 